I am going to now introduce John Kirtley so we can get started. John uh, is going to introduce our speaker. So John's with Emeritus and he's a board member. So thanks, John. Hello, folks. Thanks for coming. John Kirtley. I'm Associate General Counsel at Emeritus here in Cincinnati in Forest Park. Excuse me. Uh, happy to welcome John Weinberg and Bill Lester to town today to present an economic outlook on three different levels. Really, uh, from Bill's perspective, he's going to take a look at the country and the globe uh, from, a gl from an economic perspective and also give everyone here in the community a better picture of what Emeritus is and what it's about. I think, uh, of course, Emeritus is the uh, successor to the Union Central Life Insurance Company, which uh, was around since the 1800s and here in Forest Park since 1964. But we're now operating as one company, Emeritus. So Bill is here to tell you more about our very fine company. And Bill's title, Executive Vice President, Corporate Treasurer, and uh, basically Emeritus' financial guru uh, on many different levels. <laughs> John Weinberg is here as well, and John works for Emeritus Investment Partners. He's in charge of Emeritus' real estate portfolio. And he will dive into the details of what I know everyone's curious about, and that is what is going on at 1876 Waycross. Of course, we opened up our new building, 1880 Waycross, in September. But the hard hats continue to, uh, to show up every day, and they are working very, very hard. The renovation of the Jacobs Building is near completion. But it won't, we won't be done there, and John will uh, bring you up to date on uh, what is going on just around the corner. So with that, I will introduce Bill Lester. Thank you, John. It's great to be here. Uh, thank you to the Forest Park Chamber of Commerce for inviting us to tell the Emeritus story. It uh, should hopefully be exciting. I don't know if I'm a guru. Uh, we'll get to the end. I'll tell you a little bit about the markets in general. I've spent uh, most of my career on the investment side. But Nancy, thank you for having us. We appreciate it. And uh, also appreciate the, uh, the introduction or the comments about the uh, fast pitch and uh, community involvement and uh, uh, being part of that's important to us. We'll talk a little bit about uh, our values as a company and, and participating in the community is a big part of that. I uh, also want to uh, thank all the Emeritus Associates are here. I didn't know that we were going to have a staff meeting today. <laughs> but what a great turnout. And we'll try and get back, all of you back to work uh, at, a, at a decent time. I'm sure that's disappointing to all of you. <laughs> so, uh, and then also, of course, John Weinberg is joining us today, and he'll talk about all the uh, investment that we've made in Forest Park and the continued investment that we plan on making in, in this community and the stability that we have around, around this location. So, John, go ahead. So, uh, today's presentation, we talked a little bit about it, the Emeritus Overview, Forest Park Plans, a little bit about the economy, and then any questions? I don't know if we'll have time for questions as we kind of had started a little bit late. So, let me say uh, a couple things about the uh, life insurance industry first. But we are, we are, our core business is, is life insurance. That's where the heritage of the organizations came from. The life insurance industry uh, covers 75 million households in America, either through life insurance protection or annuity uh, protection. And uh, obviously, we're trying to take the uncertainty out of life. We're trying to uh, maximize, uh, fulfill lives going forward. Just put that in perspective a little bit. Uh, the, some numbers here, benefit payments, $548 billion came out of the insurance industry last year. The entire U.S. economy is $3 trillion. So that's, that's a very big number uh, in terms of uh, protecting the lives of America. The life insurance industry, in terms of GDP, is 3% of the U.S. economy. And we're participating in, in those numbers. I'll tell you a little bit about where we rank in each of our businesses later on. So this is the assets held by the life insurance industry, about six trillion. Uh, we are the largest uh, uh, stable and long-term supporter of uh, long-term capital in the U.S. economy, the industry. We, we are somewhere between 15 to 20 percent of the entire bond market. So all this long-term financing that's taking place 
the life insurance industry is a huge uh, contributor to the long-term capital of the economy. The industry is about 10% of the entire equity market, and I think something like 6% of the commercial mortgage industry. So a very, very large, significant participant, but the purpose and the mission of what we do is to improve the lives of, of our customers in the industry. Just a little bit of an overview about Emeritus, 2,300 associates on a nationwide basis providing, uh, providing financial, uh, diversified financial services to our clients. We have 3.2 million customers on any given day. Uh, we have 35.9 billion of assets under management. I'll talk a little bit about that number later. And uh, we have $83.2 billion of uh, face amount of life insurance. Outstanding. So we are a, a significant, relative, relevant player in the in the industry. <coughs> this is our heritage here. We are a mutual insurance company. Very significant uh, distinction distinction between a, a stock company and a mutual company. There's about 850 insurance companies, of which about 100 are mutual. So what we mean by mutual is we are owned by our customers. We do not have shareholders. Talk a little bit about the benefits of being mutual later. Um, you can see that Emeritus is uh, the consortium of three very old life insurance companies. Union Central, here in Forest Park, started in Cincinnati, established in 1867. In two years, we'll have, uh, that company would have had its 150th year anniversary. Acacia Life Insurance in Bethesda, Maryland, uh, 1869, 146 years old, and the, and the baby of the, the company is Emeritus Life Insurance Corp, which was established in 1887. We merged all three of those companies together on July 1st of 2014. It took us about four years to execute that through the regulatory environment that we operate in. And now we uh, operate under one name, Emeritus, and you probably have noticed the, the change of the signs at our uh, Forest Park location here, and all the signs have changed on a nationwide basis. So some of the benefits of being a mutual insurance company, number one, that we can focus on the customer, purely on the customer who also are the owners of, of the enterprise. We can take a long-term perspective. We're not uh, concerned about quarterly earnings progression that a stock company would be concerned about. Of course, we need to earn a fair return on our capital that we've been entrusted with uh, for the members of the company who are ultimately the, the owners and receive uh, the benefits of our, of our various financial services products. They're business-centered and that we can be focused on, uh, on the business at hand, our mission, of providing protection, and uh, we believe as a mutual insurance company that we can provide better value to the consumer uh, and that we, we can have a lower hurdle rate on our capital. We, can, we don't have to pay uh, dividends to the shareholders, which we can retain for the benefit of our, of our policyholders. So we operate in four business lines, uh, in the individual division which is our life annuity and individual disability businesses. All, all three of those businesses are represented in Forest Park. We have operations and all, from all of those here. We are um, in the life and annuity business. Remember, there's about 850 insurance companies. We're somewhere around number 30 in life and annuities. And then in uh, disability, individual disability income, we're in the top 10 in that business line. Uh, we have a group ancillary health line of business. There are no operations in Forest Park in our group business. We're one of the top five dental insurance companies in the country. We also insure vision and hearing, and we're starting to add additional uh, uh, ancillary benefits to our product lineup. A couple of distinctions here, the individual lifeline uh, our primary, those products are prim primarily sold by our, our agency uh, distribution force, so we have agents all around the country. Uh, I don't know what the number exactly is, but something north of 10,000 agents across, across the United States that sell those individual products for us. 
The group business, we have a, uh, we have a sales force that is owned by emeritus of about 90 individuals, and they go out and prospect the business to brokers, and they are talking primarily to the uh, human resource, uh, 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 human resource, uh, resource people in, in companies that we're promoting our uh, benefits to. Retirement plans, 401k plans, uh, we call those group annuities in the insurance business. We have retirement plan associates here in Forest Park. Then finally, our financial businesses, Emeritus Investment Corp., which is a broker-dealer. We have about uh, 1,400 different registered reps across the country. Emeritus Investment Partners, who John Weinberg works for, manages most of the assets that we have on our balance sheet. And then Calvert Investments is a mutual fund family that we own in Beth Bethesda, Maryland, who is uh, socially responsible, responsible investment uh, uh, mutual fund family headquartered in Bethesda that we own about $13 billion of, in assets. So uh, Lincoln, Nebraska is the headquarters. It's also a, a significant administrative uh, service center. We have other offices in Wayne, Nebraska, which is uh, 100 miles or so north of Lincoln. That is a, a call center for our dental business. Then we have uh, Cincinnati, Ohio. I think there are roughly uh, 600 associates in Cincinnati, Ohio, and the various business lines that I mentioned, in addition to a number of associates that work in the shared services area, like accounting, and IT and law that John is part of that service the entire enterprise or they may be specifically designed to a, a or designated to a business line. Uh, so, oh, hold on, John. Cincinnati, Ohio, then we have a New York company. Uh, so we have a headquarters in, in uh, New York on, on uh, Avenue of the Americas, right next to the Macy's uh, building. When, Every Thanksgiving, we watch the Macy's Day Parade, and Emeritus is right next door to that. Um, Bethesda, Maryland, where our mutual fund uh, company is headquartered. And then we have a bilingual call center in San Antonio, Texas, as well. I think that's six administrative offices. We have approximately uh, 50 group sales offices around the country and uh, 13 disability income centers where we, those are employees of Emeritus, that, uh, that promote the disability income product to the brokers and uh, customers. That's who we are uh, all across the nation, 3.2 million customers, and so we're in the business of fulfilling life. A little bit about our company highlights. So we're, um, our gap assets, what that means to to me is those are assets that we actually have on our balance sheet. So I mentioned $35.9 billion under advisement. That would include the $13 billion of mutual fund assets and the billions of assets that we have in the, for customers in our broker-dealer. So these are actually insurance-related assets that we manage on our balance sheet, $19.5 billion. We had total revenue last year of $2.1 billion was up about 5% year over year. We do operate in a very mature industry and 5% is a pretty uh, uh, top quartile growth rate for revenues. Policyholder benefits of 2.1 billion, just a coincidence that that is the same as our revenues. We have uh, something in the neighborhood of 11, $12 billion of, of uh, insurance reserves or liabilities on our balance sheet. And uh, pre-tax operating income was $135 million last year. This is the, uh, this is the uh, financial strength of the company. One of the hallmarks of a mutual insurance company is that they uh, generally operate with exceptional strength. Our, our equity in our organization at the at year end 2014 was $2.7 billion. And uh, it's been on a pretty good trajectory of, of growth. That, that four years ago it was 2.2 billion, and uh, so that additional half a billion dollars of capital uh, gets reinvested into our businesses, gets reinvested into our facilities, like here in Forest Park, 
but on general, uh, generally you can think about a half a billion dollars of capital to mean, me means I could put $5 billion of additional life insurance liabilities on my books. So that's the fuel for us to continue to grow as an organization. A couple of things about our uh, capital ratios. Emeritus, uh, you should take great comfort in this as a partner in, in Forest Park. Emeritus is one of the strongest insurance companies in the industry, hands down. And here's a couple of ratios. One is the amount of capital that we hold relative to the assets that we have on our balance sheet. Ours, the higher the number, the better. Ours is just over 14%, which means for every $7 of assets that I have on my balance sheet, I put up $1 of surplus or cushion. Um, that's a, a very conservative capital ratio. You're hearing about the banks with Basel III having to put up more capital, constraining their growth, and um, we just don't have that. The industry is, uh, is levered about 11 to 1, so just a little bit over eight times. And that's a very conservative, um, very conservative uh, leverage ratio as well for the industry. The industry is very well capitalized and very stable. But just that ratio, we're about 50% more uh, capitalized than the industry in general right now, providing plenty of opportunity for growth and stability. And then over on the, the right there, your right, is uh, our debt to equity ratio. That $2.7 billion of capital, we only have $50 million of debt outstanding on that, that capital. So our debt to capital ratio is less than 4%. And uh, very, very conservative uh, Midwestern uh, heritage of, as a mutual company really demands that we maintain our financial strength as, because we're making commitments every day that may, make a, may last a generation. And uh, we want to make sure that as we leave this company to the next leadership, that they're able to make good on the promises that Emeritus and its people are making on a day-to-day -day basis. So here's our ratings, A+, plus, uh, strong from Standard & Poor's, and A, excellent from AM Best. Um, next slide. Here, I want to tell you just a little bit about our heritage in, in Cincinnati. It's fascinating, actually. Uh, mentioned where uh, Union Central originally was founded in 1867. It was the first life insurance company uh, chartered in Ohio. And there's some pretty significant life insurance companies here. Uh, our home office originally uh, was located for, for three years, I guess, they moved, at 19 West 3rd in Cincinnati. And here's a, one of the old policies. So uh, they moved. Uh, in 1913 to the PNC Bank building downtown and 34-story uh, headquarters. It was twice the height of any other um, Cincinnati building. It was the tallest building west of uh, New York. Hey, John can tell you a little story about uh, 309 Vine Street, which was which is that nine-story building. I don't know if you'll tell them that or not, John, but uh, for a little while we, owe, we had repurchased that building last year. We were going to develop it but somebody else is going to develop it now. So we are also committed to Ohio. Um, we moved from downtown up to Forest Park uh, 50 years ago, roughly. We developed the, uh, the development of the Carillon Business Park started over 50 years ago, that 193-acre park. And John will talk about how we're, we're uh, finishing up the Carillon Business Park expansion currently. So some fascinating people that have been associated with uh, Union Central in the past. Uh, W.A. Proctor and James Gamble were initial shareholders. So at some point in uh, Union Central's history, it was a stock company, and it uh, converted to a mutual organization, same as Emeritus and uh, same as uh, uh, Acacia. Stanley Matthews, a former director, was appointed to the U.S. Supreme Court. Harry Houdini was a uh, policyholder at one time. Let's see, uh, John Pattison, former company president, elected governor in 1905. I guess you can see why, if he has the vision to build the uh, tallest building west of New York. And then Paul Brown was a former director of, uh, of the company at one time. Here's, what, uh, here's our offices that we have in, in Ohio. 
We're deeply committed to Ohio. Uh, of course, our, our strong administrative office here in Forest Park. We also have uh, a couple of group sales offices. So those, those are the dental, vision, and hearing offices in Cincinnati and Columbus. And then we have two DI centers, uh, Cincinnati and Cleveland. I guess, Paul, should that be Cincinnati or Forest Park on the DI center? Forest Park, so we'll get that corrected. Uh, so just a little bit about uh, the building blocks of, of Emeritus before I turn it over to John. Um, go ahead, John. And one more. So talk about at the very bottom are the values of, of the organization, and these are values that will never, ever change. Uh, we believe they'll never, ever change as an organization. Clearly, uh, the number one asset that we have are our people, number of them in the room today, about 2,300 strong across the nation. We like to celebrate uh, with our people and the, the successes that we have, very deeply committed to our uh, associate base. We, we adhere to the highest ethics within our organization. It's always been, uh, always has been an extremely strong value. Uh, I think it originates from that mutual uh, culture. Then uh, we have a strong community uh, presence. We want to want to serve our communities in a big way. We have many projects to do that across the nation, and I expect our people to be involved in community activities. It's one of the things that we encourage. We give time off, uh, uh, paid time off, to to support the communities in which our people operate. Stewardship. We talked a lot about our financial strength. We want to. Uh, be uh, respectful of the assets that have been entrusted to us by our members, who are also our customers. And then uh, we want to earn the trust of, of our customers, of our, the communities in which we operate, and also amongst each other as an organization. So those are our values. This is our vision. This is what we aspire to be. Basically, you can sum that up as we want to be proud about what we want to do, what we're doing. I want to be proud about how we're helping families and individuals have a better life. We want to remove the uncertainty in their lives and, and, and improve, uh, improve the situations that they find themselves in because we're dealing generally in circumstances which are not all that positive. Oh, I think you, did you go one too many or not? And then this is our mission. Um, just, uh, there, you won't see anything in here about uh, Financial results, we think that takes care of itself if we take care of our associates and our customers. And uh, we offer trusted and, and valued insurance solutions. So this is a little bit our, about our, our, our uh, community support. You can see down here is a concert on the green in Forest Park that we have done for years here. Unfortunately, the last couple of years, the weather's been a little tough. Uh, Seems like when Emeritus comes to town, maybe the weather gets bad, I don't know. But we do have uh, what we call a, uh, uh, an honors project, and we have all of our associates record their community uh, time. And we're over, in the last little over a year, 20,000 hours have been donated by our associates into the various communities in which we operate. And this is... Uh, this is just the final passion that we strive to be an approachable company. We want to make it easy and convenient and comfortable for people to work with us in very difficult times in their lives. And this, is, uh, this is a little bit of uh, visibility about our new brand. So as we merged the companies together, we rolled out the new brand of Emeritus. We feel that we want to be different. We're in the life insurance industry, the financial services industry. It's not all that exciting. I realize, but uh, we think that this uh, visibility and vision that we have of being uh, light, light and friendly and, and with very positive colors, we invite you all, the, uh, the, those of you that don't work in, in the buildings, to come out and see what we've done here in Forest Park with the look and the, and the feel of the uh, environment in which we're operating in. And uh, just the final, finally from me, I just want to uh, assure you that we're very committed to Forest Park. We have uh, over $17 million invested here in this project, uh, uh, nearly 600 associates here, and uh, obviously our tradition of community support. So at this time, I'll turn it over to 
John Weinberg, and he can talk uh, about what we're doing and uh, with the development. Thank you, Bill. So my name is John Weinberg. I'm the managing director of Emeritus Investment Partners, and we're really the investment arm for the insurance companies. We have uh, roughly 30 people in our Cincinnati in the Forest Park office that work for AIP, and we have another 30 of us in Lincoln that provide the investment uh, support. So one of the th other things I want to uh, talk about, the bill said we're committed to, uh, Emeritus is committed to Forest Park. We also make a big commitment every day in our investments. Uh, we have a commercial mortgage portfolio for Emeritus of roughly 900 loans and of 1.3 billion. And we own roughly 60 properties, 60 pieces of real estate in roughly 26 states. However, what's important is Ohio represents from the commercial mortgages alone over $120 million of mortgages, which is roughly 10% uh, of the mortgage portfolio. Our exposure in mortgages in the city of Cincinnati is over 60 million. So not only are we committed from a corporate standpoint, but we lend money here and we have confidence in Cincinnati and the local area as well as the state of Ohio. <clears throat> so if we start with the slides, here's, here's what started out roughly in 1964 at the, uh, uh, what's come to be called Carillon Business Park. You can see that the, um, the piece of the tract of ground was 193 acres of which Union Central at the time is noted as 1876. Um, the uh, next slide, th this shows what the uh, campus looked like. When the original building was done, the building on the left, we call the 1880 building. The first building was 324,000 feet. The second one was 201,000, and then the bell tower, which stands some 120 feet tall. So here's, here's where we are now. We just completed the uh, phase one, which is a brand new, what we call the new 1876. It's 70,000 square feet and houses over 360 associates. Phase two, we are in the process of renovating that building which was built in, in um, 1988. It's being renovated from top to bottom. Uh, Jacobs Engineering is in roughly 90,000 feet. Uh, and Emeritus will take the balance of that building. And we're renovating now with everybody expected to move sometime in the next 30 days. The phase three building is the original building, noted as 1876. And then phase four, we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. So here's, here's the new building that we had the, uh, completed last fall. Uh, as you can see, it's equal to a little over one uh, length of a football field. It is one story, and it houses, again, I think that number is probably 360 today. So that building's up and operating and is extremely efficient and houses our individual uh, life division and Cheryl's works in there. So next, so this is phase two that's underway. Uh, again, some people call it the Jacobs Building. Um, again, it's underway and be completed in the next 30 days, and we'll be ro locating our 240 associates from the old building uh, into this building, uh, and uh, as as we fill it up with with our associates, uh, and we'll have a new cafeteria, and uh, really bringing the building, even though it's not quite 30 years, bring it up to current standards, and as well as coexist with our friends at Jacobs. So that brings us to uh, the original building, built in 1964. As you can appreciate, it is 324,000 feet, it is extremely large, very inefficient, designed really for how businesses operated at the time. The HVAC system is old. The, the manufacturers no longer are in existence. 
parts are nearly impossible to get. And if you talk about band-aiding a building, this would require one huge uh, band-aid. So this building will actually be demolished and it will take roughly a year and a half for that process to be completed. But the Bear Carillon Bell Tower will remain. Thank you. Yep. So th this is really where, where the focus is for us. You can see what the outline at the outer, the outer loop, so to speak, is really what was the Carillon Business Park. And you can see there are a number of, number of businesses, both in the north, which is the warehouse area, and, and some of the other user, users uh, uh, coming around on the side. Um, that, would, that really forms what was, uh, what is Carillon. Now what we're going to do is look at really, if you look at the down mill and across on Waycross, that will become kind of the extension of Carillon. As we, as the 1876 building is demolished and we open up additional land there, uh, we hope to lure additional tenants uh, and, uh, and buildings and, and employers to Forest Park and to this location. I should tell you we are negotiating now with uh, two potential buyers of land in the traditional Carillon Business Park, which again would add um, a significant number of new employees to Forest Park. So we're excited about that and we hope to be able to sign those deals in the next 30 days and make an announcement about uh, new companies moving to Carillon. But our focus really over the, over the next several months will be how can we utilize what was uh, excess land to incorporate it into the Carillon Business Park. And we've been in contact with the city for this entire discussion. They're, they, uh, they're excited. It gives the city of Forest Park opportunity to bid on projects to uh, put forth the business park as a way to enhance the city. And uh, we've been working very closely and very well, I might add, with the city of Forest Park. So that's really um, what our focus is, and um, I'd be glad to take questions. Any questions for John on that? So you can see we're committed to uh, this location. Uh, I can just say from Emeritus's employment perspective that the growth in employment will in Cincinnati or Forest Park will be dependent upon the growth of the uh, respective businesses that are uh, serviced here or operate here. So as those businesses grow, there'll, there'll be uh, additional employment, uh, be kind of commensurate with the overall growth of Emeritus in general. But uh, since we do run diversified businesses, uh, the, the employment patterns depend upon uh, kind of what uh, financial services are in favor at the time. So we're uh, a big commitment here. Is anyone from the city here? Uh, we appreciate uh, you know, we appreciate your uh, your help and, and uh, consideration as we continue to to grow in Forest Park and and develop out uh, out these properties. So we appreciate the help so far. It's been great and uh, big assistance to us. So any questions for John before we let him off the hook here? Yep. Thank you for your support. And it's a great environment. So on that high note, let's uh, let's go into the economy a little bit because uh, mm, I'm not so sure I'm uh, as bullish on on the, the overall economy or I'm going to say the, the the equity markets. The economy's great as maybe I'm bullish on uh, Forest Park. But uh, so let's get into this. I'm going to do it quickly because we wanted to get out of here by. By one, respect everybody's time, but let's just uh, let's just talk about a couple of signs of the times, okay? Uh, Five dollar gasoline, and uh, we were able to get a snapshot here of under under two dollars for a premium. Uh, let me tell you what this is a huge 
uh, supply shock bonus to households. Huge, 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 huge. And I'm sure Home Depot maybe is experiencing some of the benefits. I think in the spring we'll see more of this with respect to retail. But uh, figure $500 to $1,000 per household as a result of uh, the supply shock. It's, it's not a permanent uh, fiscal change to uh, the consumer, but this is a, this is a supply shock where uh, more dollars will be coming into the economy shortly as a result of that. So that's big. So th what about these signs? I mean, just not that long ago, unemployment, you know, double digits. Uh, just Friday, 295,000 new jobs. 12 months in a row, over two, two, 200,000 new jobs. Um, over 3 million new jobs in the last 12 months. A million of those, and the all important 20 to 30, old, 30 year old range, where family, think families, houses, furniture, all those sort of things. Uh, so jobs, uh, job creation has been phenomenal. The supply shock from, from energy, uh, the consumer, uh, with uh, really with their balance sheets having been repaired since the recession of 2000, 2008, and 2009 is in great shape, and the consumer represents 70% of our economy, 70%. So all this other stuff that goes on, uh, you know, is kind of secondary to what the consumer is doing. So the consensus is for the economy in general, another kind of 3% year of growth. 2014 was 2.4% a really unusual first quarter a year ago with uh, weather disruptions, uh, having kind of another unusual first quarter with weather. But 2.4% um, uh, in 2014, 3%, probably a gimme in 2015. And, and I would project that uh, we might see economic growth greater than 3% this year, which would be very, very strong. Uh, and a continuation of a long string of growth uh, since the re recession ended. So, well, what's the other side? Interest rates. Um, you know, one time, uh, I think when I bought my first house, interest rates were, I uh, took out a, a home loan uh, at 12%. Today it's uh, sub, uh, sub 3% or sub 4%, something like that. Not in the market for a home loan, but. Um, and, now, and now we have, uh, uh, cash at zero, basically, with Fed funds at, at zero percent, and we're just starting this conversation about higher interest rates. I think uh, if you had asked me before last Friday, what, what's the Fed going to do? I would have said, I don't think they're doing anything for, for a while, and maybe with the strong dollar, they might not even move this year. But with that big jobs number on Friday, it's a, now it's only a question of whether the Fed starts to move short-term rates only, because uh, that's all they have control over either June or September. I don't think there's any question that, that that's where they're at right now. And they probably take the, uh, the word patience off of their uh, discussion about what they're doing with, with interest rates. So uh, what are the signals in the economy? Just really quickly, um, uh, Economic growth, positive, let's say 3%, better than last year, that's good. Employment growth is phenomenal. This, these numbers are just big. Housing starts, um, you know, they were, they were a little bit of a disappointment in 2014, but they're still growing. That's uh, 1.15 1, million housing starts are projected for 2015 versus 1 million, which is a good number, but still way below uh, where we started in 2007, but the trajectory is, is up. I think we're seeing uh, some uh, housing starts even in this area, which have been real slow to, to take off. Uh, retail sales with the consumer, positive, and then consumer confidence. So all, all strong trajectories there. I won't go too much into the details. And then some more signals. Le leading economic indicators, of course, follow all that. The consumer price index, that arrow should really be down with energy prices. Uh, the CPI is probably going to be 0 0.5, 0 0.6% this year with, with energy prices being down, as well as the uh, importing deflation from the stronger dollar. 
And, uh, but that's not necessarily a bad thing, uh, but we don't want deflation because it creates other problems for us. The strong dollar um, is bringing in, bringing in uh, uh, cheaper goods and services in, into the U.S. It also uh, slowing down our growth globally, so there's an offset to that. And then we have this Federal Reserve who's really on the, on the edge of doing something right now, and you never fight the Fed, never, never, ever. Tell you a little bit about what, so what are they dealing with? Um, they have to balance all these things. What the Fed has to do, they have two mandates. One is inflation, inflation 0.6%. Uh, they don't really need to move. Uh, the other is, is employment. And, and at one point, they said that they would move interest rates when employment dropped below 6%. Well, it hit 5.5% on Friday. I think they got to start to move. But they have all these things over there on the right, because you don't want deflation. You have uh, all the issues in, in Russia directly related to energy, the uh, anemic European recovery. So they started uh, uh, quantitative easing in Europe yesterday, today's Tuesday, started yesterday. They're going to buy $1 trillion of bonds, sovereign bonds in Europe. So re remember that I, I said that the insurance industry owns $6 trillion of bonds, and the insurance industry is 15 to 20% of the entire bond market. So w with the, within the next 12 to 18 months in Europe, the European Central Bank is going to buy a trillion dollars of bonds. And uh, they're buying these at a loss. They're, they're actually paying a hunt, like 102 and going to get back 100. And that 102 goes into the economic system and stimulates growth. They're trying to emulate what we did here in the U.S. to get the economy growing. But they're, they're dealing with, the Fed has to deal with all this before they, before they move interest rates. China, uh, also their growth is slowing, but it's still much faster on a global basis. And then Japan has been in this persistent uh, deflationary uh, spiral for 20 years. So they're, they're balancing all this. And the next slide, just kind of to sum it up, uh, if they move too quickly, um, you have issues with uh, valuations in the, in the stock market. Just, uh, you, it's a, it will have a damaging effect if they move too quickly. And if they don't move fast enough, we're going to end up with inflation. It's really a, a tough job that Janet has. Uh, I think they're doing a great job managing expectations. They are the reason why the economy is in the shape that it's in today, I believe. Uh, it's not because of fiscal policy. We haven't done anything on the fiscal side. But she's got this balancing, but her mandates are inflation and employment, and I think that the Fed is getting to the point where they're going to have to start moving short-term interest rates higher. And let's see, go to the next slide to see what it has to say. Okay, if I just, just kind of go back, go back to the Fed. So, so what happens when the, Fed, um, when the Fed moves interest rates higher? And, uh, and if they don't do this with a lot of confidence, the stock market will, at, and it's at highs, and also the stock market has uh, only been higher valued 10% of the time in its history, the U.S. stock market. So we're extremely expensive in terms of stocks right now, but justified because of the cost of capital is so low. So you can balance that out. And in, in the past, you've had two big drivers of the, of the U.S. stock market. One has been earnings. Earnings have been very strong. So over the last five years, I think the, uh, the stock market is up 200%, something like that. And I think uh, on, it's been averaging like an 18% average annual growth rate or total return. And, uh, but you've had, you've had earnings been, have been very strong. And earnings this year are not going to be strong. They've come down from double digits already this year from the top, uh, the, the analysts on Wall Street, down to about a 5% growth rate. So we're going to have some bumpiness with respect to earnings. And then, uh, then you have had the uh, monetary policy of easy interest rates, which has also helped 
inflate uh, stock prices. So when the Fed starts to move, what happens? Uh, went back and looked at the last five times the Fed moved. Every one of those times the, when the Fed started to move, the stock market went down, 100%. Doesn't mean it's going to happen in the future. How much does it go down? Interesting. Each of those five times it went down between 5 and 10%. And then uh, six months later, in all those cases, the stock market was higher six months later than where it started, this whole process. So expect, with earnings being bumpy, the Fed starting to move, the market at uh, very high interest rates, that, that the expectation for the stock market is going to be um, a little rougher than what it's been the last five years. I'm not saying that we're going to have a correction. I wouldn't make big changes in asset allocation. But I just don't get caught up in the euphoria right now. It's, it's pretty extreme. And uh, just be cautious. We heard there were, some, uh, there were some gurus yesterday that were talking that I heard, true gurus. And they're, they're saying the same thing. They're saying to be cautious right now. Don't get caught up in, in all this euphoria. So just at the time where you think you're pretty smart about this stuff, the market slaps you down. And I think there's, there's things that are changing right now are a pretty confusing inflection point. So just our summary of our opinion, the economy is going to continue to grow, uh, driven by the consumer, this energy shock, supply shock, and job growth. And then uh, finally, the short-term interest rates are going to go up, I think, this year. Pretty sure that that's going to happen. That's not going to have that much of an impact on the long-term interest rates. So the, the yield curve will flatten. And uh, there will be modest returns from stocks. So already this year, stocks are up 5%. And um, I, would, I would hazard to guess we're going to be somewhere around 5% at the, at the end of this year. So maybe flat returns for the, the year, but maybe a dip in there, and then, then we recover from there. And I just, the only advice, been in this business for over 30 years, that you have to maintain diversified investment portfolios. It's really the only free lunch in investments. As soon as you get really smart and you decide to concentrate on that sure bet, you're going to lose. So maintain uh, very diversified investment portfolios going forward. So that's who we are. We appreciate your time. Uh, thank you very much. We're committed to Forest Park. And we look forward to growing together in the future. Thank you. Thank you very much, and I'll get with you. Um, we have a uh, wonderful program here with Forest Park, and if you speak at our meetings, then you get uh, greatly compensated besides the lunch. No, um, actually, we'll, we'll uh, if you can get with me on your um, on a charity of your choice, and we'll donate. We'll uh, give you a donation to your charity of your choice. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you all for being here today. We appreciate it all. Um, couple. Upcoming events, we have, as I said, March 18th, we have the RCP meeting, and that is at Raffles, I think. I'm pretty sure that's where it is. Um, the, then we'll be back here on April the 14th, right, the day before taxes. So we'll have a little surprise. You know, we'll have some kind of tax relief day party. Um, Paul Bram is planning that and what we're going to have. Actually, I, um, I think he's working on, um, he's either working on a speaker or a uh, roundtable discussion that we'll have for uh, small businesses. Um, and then in May, we have the Simply Money guys coming to the RCP, um, and they will be in, will be in Springdale. So that'll be um, in May. And then in June, we have our warm-up for our golf outing, and our golf outing is July 22nd, which coincides with Emeritus's Golf League Day. So if you're involved in the golf league at all, you get a kind of a nice deal that it's, it works out really well. So if you're not involved in the golf league, see how you can get involved. And we have a really good golf outing. And that benefits um, our scholarship and some other programs that we do here. And um, But in June, we have a day that we get to, well, I'm pretty sure this is how it's going to work. We usually have a golf pro either come here or last year we went to the uh, training center right there, right across from uh, Emeritus. And they let us have like a half a day with 
two instructors. It was pretty cool. So if anybody wants to get their game going in, uh, in June, I need a lot of help with mine. I had two babies in two years. I haven't played golf in forever. And Ray Hodges is my partner. <laughs> I gotta get that. The city when 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 you got the big dog in the city, you gotta get you gotta be good. You gotta get your putting in. So, um, thank you all again for being here. We appreciate it, and uh, we'll see you next month.